Welcome to all of you for this semester's presentation of the Introduction to Social Welfare. This is an asynchronous web-based presentation of this class and what that means is that you and I will not have any scheduled times together each week, no classroom meetings, no e-live or other kinds of scheduled meetings uh, where we sit down together at the same time. This is asynchronous so this means that um, you determine when you approach the course and when you address the materials. If you've had other online classes, this may be different from you. I've been told that the way I structure my class is different from how some other online instructors do this. And your own experience with uh, online education may be more like a kind of a correspondence course where you get materials sent to you, you read through them, you send them back to the instructor and with minimal interaction the instructor grades it, sends you more material which you complete and send back to the instructor. This is not a correspondence course, this is an e-learning course and so while you do have a certain amount of time in which to decide when you're going to do the work, there are still segments, uh, we call them learning units week by week and what you should do is to organize your thinking around finishing up the work in each learning unit each week. Once you fall behind and you begin to fall behind week after week after week it becomes very difficult for you to keep up with the material and in fact it also will likely mean that you won't get graded on some of the things if you turn them in too late and so so please remember from the from the start that this is a course that's very important to keep current with and to keep up with as we go along. That said I think you're going to find that the material in this course is very challenging and and um, although um, it may seem like this is going to be a rather dry topic and from time to time as we look at perhaps some of the ancient history in social welfare which we're not going to spend too much time on by the way but those kinds of topics may seem a little dry to you and a little remote but I believe you'll see as the semester goes along you're going to find the material more and more relevant and the early material is going to be really giving you a good foundation for that for that more current material later. This is a cross-listed course with the social work and the human services department and so we have individuals from both from with majors from both departments or interest in both departments coming into this class. In addition this course uh, is a uh, fulfills a general education requirement for students outside of our field and so a lot of times we have individuals coming to the class with a variety of opinions, uh, different viewpoints and different perspectives and this can really give us an opportunity to learn a lot from each other and to hear some viewpoints uh, from each other that we might not otherwise hear. My name is Bill Gaelic. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and you have my contact information there, uh, both my university email address and my home email address. Both of these email addresses are private. No one else accesses the emails that come in on these on these addresses and so you should feel uh, assured of your privacy if if you do contact me at either of those addresses. The university prefers that we communicate as much as possible through the university addresses that we have. Um, I will also tell you though that I check my home email address more frequently than I do my my university email although I, I do try to keep up with both. There are phone numbers there for you to reach me uh, as well however again I'll say that I believe email is probably the the best way to reach me. We have actually three books in this course uh, two of them are more like textbooks the first one and this is the primary text this is the text that really the course schedule is organized around is a new history of social welfare. This is now in its seventh edition and the author Phyllis Day who wrote the first six uh, editions of this has now taken on a co-author. I believe she's probably getting up there in years and, and uh, Jerome Scheele has probably been very helpful in bringing, bringing things up to date in the textbook. I uh, have used, I have taught this class uh, first in the classroom and then more recently online for most of the last 20 years and I have used different editions of this textbook uh, almost from the beginning. I did switch to another text once or twice but never found myself satisfied with the content of the text and keep coming back to Dr. Day's book. You will notice that there is a decided feminist leaning in her writing. Uh, this will stir you up sometimes whether you're a male or a female and that's a good thing because we, I want a textbook that maybe even upsets my students some but certainly gets them thinking uh, about the things that are said and so if, if it appears sometimes like she goes a little past what you think is uh, 
normal <laughs> that's intentional uh and and it, believe me she she really makes very good points and again i think by the end of the semester you may or may not agree with her but i think you'll agree that that she does a pretty good presentation of this topic now this this um textbook takes us through social welfare like uh, on a historical basis so after a first chapter or two where she introduces you some to some basic concepts you know she'll take you back into oh, I think really even caveman times and starts out there and works her way up to modern day now we're not going to spend as I said we're not going to spend a, a lot of time focusing upon the ancient history but uh, some of that material is really useful to you for later on so we, we're going to cover it but, but cover it kind of lightly at the beginning of the semester so this is the this is the central organizing textbook. The next text that you're going to uh, have is the uh, Karen Seacom book, the third edition of So You Think I Drive a Cadillac. Rather than presenting an historical viewpoint of social welfare and why the programs we have have, have developed, um, this textbook really takes you into the lives of the current recipients in the social welfare system and shows you what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis to, to live in the system and also answers a lot of questions about why welfare recipients do what they do. Um, if you have a, a particular perspective or belief about a social welfare recipient, welfare recipients, and I'd be willing to bet you that 95% uh, of you do, it's very, very, very important that that you read this book because this book is going to help you understand some things that you probably don't understand now, and it may give you an entirely different perspective on on recipients. And really, the, uh, the these here we're talking about our clients in the social welfare and the human services field, and it's important to be able to understand their their lives. And so this is a really a great uh, great opportunity to learn about this. And and uh, Miss Seacom has a, a very good perspective on not only on the on the lives of the welfare recipients, but also upon the social and economic structure in which they live. And, and we'll spend a good deal of time at the end of the semester talking about our economic system and uh, maybe uh, how that economic system itself um, sets up and, and maintains these individuals in poverty. Thirdly, there's a little book, and I say little because it, you know it's a, it's a novel. Uh, written about 100 years ago, as you can see by Upton Sinclair, called The Jungle. You may have already read this book in high school because I know that, that a lot of times uh, high school English teachers require this book. This book uh, is uh, written about um, immigrants who come to America around the turn of the century, the 1900s, and um, come here believing that uh, all, all they're going to have to do is work really hard because that's the belief system in America. That's what you're told. That's what you're told, that if you're willing to work, you're going to succeed. Um, and so they come here with that belief and find that, uh, well, indeed, there's a lot of things uh, that have the deck stacked against them. And that's not really exactly the case. There's a number of different reasons why I have you read this book. Um, we read it around the time uh, in the day text that this covers around, you know, 100 years ago or so, you'll be reading this book. Um, and it shows you a little bit about what social welfare was like, not only, well, it shows you what life is like for immigrants coming to this nation how their image of what is uh, what is supposed to be in America stacks up against what is really in America. It also shows you what it's like um, in the United States without social welfare programs because in the early 1900s really there weren't very many social welfare programs at all and so when trouble befalls this family, the central characters of this book, there is no help out there for them, and 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 when when we talk about eliminating welfare and and uh, you know getting people uh, so they're no longer dependent upon the system and maybe depending upon churches and volunteer organizations instead of the government to provide for the needs of of individuals who aren't succeeding in the in the economic system. This is what happens. This is the way life would be, and um, so I think it's a very good uh, very good picture of that as well. Upton Sinclair. If I was going to compare him to anybody in the modern day, uh, Upton Sinclair 100 years ago in book writing was a pretty much the corollary of Michael Moore is today in film. Um, Sinclair and other writers uh, were referred to as the muckrakers back in those days. You, you may remember that from your study of American history. Um, and, and what they did was they tried to expose the um, well, society for what it was to, to kind of help individuals see that there were problems within their society that they didn't want to recognize or face or weren't, weren't being told about. And The Jungle is one of those books, and it's probably, I would venture to say, perhaps the most famous of those works uh, from 100 years ago. Um, 
later on in the semester, we may be taking a look at a Michael Moore film. And, and uh, um, many people I know have this kind of gut reaction to Michael Moore. They don't like him. And uh, I, I can assure you that this is how people felt about Upton Sinclair 100 years ago. But we're still reading Upton Sinclair. Sinclair, by the way, uh, was a socialist. And, and this book really is um, an attempt to, con uh, again, 100 years ago, an attempt to convince individuals that socialism is a better economic system than capitalism. And, and uh, at the end of the book, you know, he's going to take you through this kind of explanation of why socialism is better through, the, through a speech uh, made by a character in the book. And, and you, sh you should read it and, and, and contemplate it. Um, not, I'm not advocating for the overthrow of the economic system, but, but by the end of the semester, uh, many of you are going to be asking yourself if the economic system is really what's best for, for us, the, the capitalist system. And, and uh, this might kind of get you thinking about that because there are many things in the capitalist system that set up poverty and ensure that poverty continues. Um, so this book, um, I, you'll, you'll have this book read, I think, by the end of um, October, if I remember correctly, or in around there. And you're going to do a short paper on that uh, about your reaction to the book. So, um, uh, yeah, I think you'll enjoy the book. So just to kind of touch a little bit on the course requirements here, uh, you have a syllabus. Uh, it's it's at the, on the syllabus link uh, in the course menu, and you'll find a downloadable and printable copy of the syllabus, and please do read it. There may be some slight revisions made to this syllabus from time to time, and if there's anything that, uh, you know, is... Um, significant I'll be sure to tell you this but this is really what's intended at this point and is likely to be the you know the primary guy throughout the semester so be sure you read your syllabus and let me know if you have any questions um, about any of the material there uh, one of the things you want to notice is the frequency of your particip participation will be graded uh, you want to read about that and we'll talk about this a little bit later in this introductory lecture here also, there's a, a, a brief reference to how uh, re, uh, responses or posts that you make in discussion boards can be appropriate or inappropriate. And there are other places in the course uh, where that's explained as well. And uh, we'll be pointing you to that as this, as this little lecture goes on. So this is how your, this is how your um, grading is done. You'll see 50 points for participation and attendance. You know, Blackboard tells me when you uh, when you've last uh, checked in in the course. I can I can tell, you know, pretty much. You know, there's different ways that Blackboard kind of shows me where you're working, where you're not, those kinds of things. So I have that as well as the opportunity to kind of, you know, observe your your um, contributions to the discussion boards and and in your blogs and your participation in your group project and those kinds of things so that that's the kind of thing that participation and attendance is going to be based upon. If you if you really work at the course you can pretty much figure you're going to get 50 points you know if, if and again if you if you disappear for three or four weeks if you take off on a vacation or something like that the likelihood is you'll lose some some of these points in that but if you're if you're pretty well present pretty much every week you're um, you don't have to be perfect necessarily but close to it you'll get the full 50 points discussion boards and blogs will add up to 280 points and I'll tell you about that in a few more slides your paper on the jungle 70 points uh, that will be due um, again I think at the end of October I'm sorry the end of September if I said October before I meant uh, I meant September um, you have a group research and written project and more about this in a few slides this is the biggest portion uh, the biggest single thing you'll do that's worth up to 150 points and that is due early November generally um, discussion board responses to classmates projects when the when your group has submitted its its paper and you will the group will submit one paper to me you'll work together on this uh, after I will I will grade it and mark it up and give it back to you but I will also put an ungraded uh, clean version of that paper in a discussion board forum and and uh, your fellow classmates will then have an opportunity to read your paper and to join in a discussion about your topic with you and so that's an additional 50 points there um, uh, more about that later um, there are two tests during the semester one about mid-semester the other at the end one is worth 40 the other 60 
points, so 100 points total there. And every now and then, every five or, there's maybe five or six times where there are um, extra discussion boards. So that instead of having just one discussion board during the week, there are two posted. You can select one or the other, it doesn't really matter which. And if you do both, uh, you can earn those extra points, which, you know, will, will um, kind of give you a chance, you know, to make up if you don't do as well on the test as you want to, or you didn't score as well in some discussion boards as you, as you might have, or something like that. If you missed a, a blog or two, these are opportunities for you to make up points. They're periodic uh, throughout the semester. So altogether, not including those 50 bonus points, um, 700 points total. Here's your grading scale, pretty much a standard university grading scale, I think. Uh, so if you do your math, you know, 630 points above is an A, and so on. All of this is in your uh, printed syllabus, by the way, so please be sure to print a copy of that and keep it on hand. 50 points for participation and attendance, as I have explained to you already. Discussion boards, um, 10 points for each discussion board each week. Um, you have a reading assignments. Your, your course will open every Sunday morning in Blackboard, and the reading assignments will be posted there. And so you have the week, as far as the discussion boards are concerned, you have the week to read the, make the readings. Uh, and then by the following Sunday, respond to um, a question that I have posed for you for that week in discussion board. Again, occasionally there's a second post, which gives you an opportunity to earn some bonus points. Um, and then after you have posted your original res your original response to that question, um, for the, over the next several days, classmates will hopefully will respond to what you have posted, or you will respond to some of the things that your classmates have posted. So each week for each discussion board, in order to get your full 10 points, you will have an original post of at least 150 words, plus two responses to your classmates' original posts. Okay, so if you do them all right, uh, then, and, and they don't have to be 150 words, those responses, they can be shorter, but they should be meaningful, not just like, I agree, but I, I see what you're saying about such and such a topic, you know, and my experience tells me that that's right, uh, one time, blah, 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 you know, something like that, not just simply I agree or I disagree, but, but making a, a real response. Now, the discussion boards have, you will see in Blackboard, they have an option for you uh, when you make your post to uh, subscribe to this post. And what that does, if you click subscribe, then, um, and you can do this with any of the posts, not only yours, but your classmates as well if you read them, but when you subscribe to a post, you will get a notice in email when somebody responds to what you've written so that you can go, I think the link is in the email, in fact, so it will take you right to the response. You can read that response, and you can respond to that as well. And that will, that will, by the way, that will contribute to your, um, you know, your ten points. Um, you really, this is how you get a discussion going. So, you know, some students go in and make a post and go back on Thursday and find a couple uh, classmates' posts and make a response to them and submit that, and they say, "This is my ten points." But really, that's not the idea. That's not the. It's not the, the. Um, you know the the uh, what we want to have happen in discussion boards. If you want to have a discussion, you go back and you check what people have said to you, or what they ha or maybe what the, if you responded to somebody else, what that person thought about your response to their post, and, and respond again, discuss. You know, and and really, the discussion boards stay open throughout the semester, but but most of the discussion is kind of tied up within a week or two. You know, after the board opens, but uh, this is a great opportunity to really kind of think through and work through some topics, some questions that I pose uh, with your peers in this class. I will uh, join in on the discussion boards from time to time. I'll read all of them. I will join in on them from time to time and make some comments myself, but really this is more your discussion. Uh, you'll see more responses from me in blogs than in the discussion board, but, but um, make it a discussion. And, and I have seen some classes really do this and it's it's really pretty amazing when I uh, when I see the kinds of things that they're talking about in these class in these topics. So so anyway, how this goes then, material opens on a Sunday morning, say Sunday morning, September 8th. By the following Sunday evening, you should have, uh, I see and I have two questions. I should have fixed this. It's really one question most weeks. Sometimes there's two questions. That's that extra 
credit thing but just say one question okay so so the question opens with the, with the readings on September the 8th you have a week to make an original response of 150 words or less so by September 15th you should have posted your original response to the question and then by the Thursday after that you should have gone back in and responded to at least two of your classmates posts so um, that would be by September 19th so over the course of 10 11 days these discussion boards are going on and again I encourage you to keep discussing even when uh, September the 19th has passed for instance in this discussion board at this example to, to continue discussing these things with, with with your classmates now just for your own information um, the grading will probably happen after the discussion board is completed that Thursday evening and so I would likely on a September 8th discussion board you would probably see grades going in around the 21st or 22nd about two weeks later because that's when I know when I've seen everybody's posts you know and, and the deadlines have all passed on the board and so I can give a good grade then um, uh, sometimes I'm going to fall behind. I, I'm going to tell you that right now. I, it just happens. I know that. I'm teaching two online courses, and uh, or I have another class in a classroom, and and uh, you know sometimes I just life at home or whatever will pull me away from this. This is my part-time job, by the way. Um, I, I didn't even tell you about what I do in the daytime, but but um, um, this is um, so so. My goal is to have grades in within two weeks after the discussion boards. Your original post plus two responses to classmates' posts earn you 10 points. This is a public thing, so everybody in the class can see it. Um, and occasionally there are two discussion boards in a learning unit for extra credit points. Now the, um, the current events post, uh, this is really what we call, it will be called your weekly e-scrapbook blog or something like that, is a private post between you and me. I give you an opportunity to have a private post with me because I want you to have the opportunity if you were in the classroom and you come up to me at break or after class say can I speak with you a few minutes and you might tell me about something that in the material or in the uh, content that is concerning you or troubling you or relates to something in your life or maybe you're upset about something that somebody else has said or there's something in the in the news that you need to talk about with me or something this is an, a, an opportunity for you to get in my ear basically and 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 so um, this is an opportunity for you to kind of let your head down a little bit more maybe um, uh, say things a little more frankly and bluntly uh, than you might in a discussion board because it's just you and me um, but um, so so this is a private post this gives you a chance to talk to me but this post um, what what the blog is about really is about you going out and finding some material in in the news newspaper uh, in the media wherever it is something from that week relating to social welfare civil rights human rights women's issues you know gay rights uh, you know whatever it might be social welfare budgets education budgets you know all these kinds of things that the government may do or that persons may do that impact our clients impact our programs impact impact uh, human rights okay so that's a pretty broad area you and I'm going to post uh, a good ex an example of a good blog um, uh, in the grading guidelines section in the course so you can see what I think is a 10 point post but you should have a, a paragraph that summarizes the article and you should tell me what the article is about and where you got it what the date was of the article uh, just a, a, a paragraph summarizing what's in the article and then a response of about 150 words or at least that tells me what your response to that is what your reaction to that is so that's your blog that's your weekly scrapbook uh, your weekly e-blog in in uh, when I teach this class in the classroom students actually are clipping articles and putting them in scrapbooks for me and so, uh, although nowadays I think I might actually start doing the e-blog even in, in a face-to-face -face classroom but this is what I've done in the past and so so this is really the your current events thing and the idea of this is is to uh, you know you're reading this material about history or you're reading this material about uh, uh, the history of social welfare or you're reading this material about social welfare recipients you know and and you probably aren't one of them you may be but you're you know in one way or another you are but as far as actually being a public assistance recipient you may be one but probably aren't uh, but so you're reading all those things and you see something in the news that connects to this somehow and so you know you that's what you want to comment on and, and then so your response might be reaction to the news as well as the stuff that we're talking about in class you know or what your classmates are saying in class and again that's between you and me
So that's 10 points each as well. So for your discussion boards each week, that's the public part, and the blog, the eScrapbook blog, which is the private post about current events, the two of them together give you up to 20 points each week. And so that's how you get those 280 points there. There's a thorough description of how your posts earn points in uh, this week's learning unit aptly uh, titled uh, how your post will earn points and and also um, I'm, I'm developing and have continued to develop an item in your course menu called board and blog grading guidelines which answer a lot of questions about how grades how grades are assigned to your posts if you feel on a 10 point post you only got six points and you don't know why that is you know you should feel free to contact me but before you do that I really would encourage you to read through especially the board and blog grading guidelines see if you can find your answer there because it's probably there but if not you know let me know and I'll try to explain it to you how I came up with your grade the uh, paper on the, the jungle when you're and I think it's around week six you have to look on the course calendar but I believe it's it's so uh, week six it is um, at the end of September this is going to be due and um, well it's the end of September if this is the fall semester I this this lecture is probably going to be used uh, in future semesters as well so if I say it's due at the end of September if if you're taking a spring course obviously it's not due in September <laughs> so check your uh, syllabus for due dates but uh, in any event, around week six, this is going to be due. And your paper is just three to six pages long. Um, you will have a brief summary of the book. I just want to know that you actually read the book, um, what your reaction is to the book, and, and, and do, tie it into course concepts some. You know, that's what a 70-point paper is going to do. It's going to have those three elements in it. I'm going to give you a place to submit this assignment in your Blackboard course itself. Uh, you will type up a paper, a Word document, and attach it. You won't type it into the assignment box. But you'll attach a paper and then I will grade that. I'll read it and grade it and give you a, res um, a grade and a response right back in that same spot. Um, that'll appear later on as uh, time approaches for this project. The, the uh, biggest single project you're going to participate in is this uh, term research project. And without going into great detail about this now, Essentially, I'm going to assign you to a controversial topic in today's uh, social welfare, human rights arena, in the social in the social scene. And uh, let's say that the the question might be, uh, you know, should uh, same-sex couples be allowed to marry? Okay, let's just say that's the topic. Um, I will assign, depending upon the size of the class, uh, two to three individuals for a yes position a pro position um, and two or three individuals with a no a con position and so each position the two or three individuals in each position will d talk together work, uh, and I'll give you a group site in Blackboard where you can do this um, you will communicate with each other I guess is a better way of putting it about how you want to divide up your yes or your no um, position you will consult with each other put that stuff together okay and then for the two or three people that are arguing the opposite side or arguing is the wrong word researching the opposite side um, you will also collaborate with them to present one paper that includes both the pro and the con the yes or the no to that question or that topic you present that paper you put it in your group site in Blackboard uh, where I will access it I will grade it I'll write up some comments on it will download my commented uh, marked up paper back to you on your on your group site where you will have that and then I will also take your paper the clean copy of the paper without my marks and comments on it post it in a discussion board and your classmates then will be able to read the paper and to earn uh, up to 50, well up to 50 points altogether reading each other's papers and, and engaging in discussions about that particular topic okay so that's basically what that's about I, I have to tell you something if you procrastinate on projects routinely please do not do that in this um, I have seen some groups work fantastically together it is very possible to do a very good group project even if you've never actually met each other in a face-to-face -face basis through the tools that, that I'll get you through Blackboard 
Um, but the, the one thing that has to happen is you have to show up there. You have to check in in that site. You have to communicate with each other. And you have to do that regularly. You can't wait until the end of the semester or a week before the papers do and then finally see what your what your group mates want to do because they're probably already pretty irritated with you to say the least because you haven't checked in earlier. And, and in, in all likelihood, because most people don't want to wait to the last minute, they will have done most of the work without you. And I'm going to tell you, they'll tell me this, and, and I encourage them to do that. <laughs> um, groups, um, you know, if you, groups are that way. If you contribute, then you share in it. But if you don't, um, they'll call you out. They'll let me know. You'll get less points if you get points for the project. And so I'm just telling you this to say, um, a good group member checks in regularly, checks in frequently. Uh, I would encourage you from the beginning to make sure you have each other's email addresses. Now that you can access each other, there's an email uh, function in your group site. Um, I would also encourage you to exchange phone numbers so that you can get a hold of each other. You have to check your your university email all the time <laughs> uh, to make sure you're communicating well. Um, I am going to uh, require, uh, and I'll, I'll give you more information about this when I actually open up this group project and, and make the assignments, but there will be a couple of points where um, you will all have to have checked in with your group, and there will be certain things I'm going to expect from you uh, in that group, and if you don't do that, you, you as an individual, the individuals who don't do that will lose points uh, then. So, so um, this is intended to make sure that people are checking in and working with each other. And if they're not, um, I find out who isn't, and and um, well, it, it just goes from there. Okay. So that, that sounds kind of um, negative, and I don't mean it to be that way because this is really a good project for you. And and students have told me uh, time and time again how much they've learned in this project that, that, about their topic and things that even they didn't know about before, even though they were interested in it. Now, the other interesting thing about this project, this is research. I said something about it shouldn't be an argument. It should be a research point. Um, if, if I give you a um, the yes position on whether or not uh, gays and lesbians should, no, I give you the no position on whether uh, gays and lesbians should be permitted to marry, and you feel firmly that the answer is yes, um, and, and, you know, that's, well, you still are going to research the no. You're going to go in there and try to find what the logic is, what the information is behind um, individuals who are opposed to this. Think about what you're going to learn when you do that, you know, so you may be assigned to a position. Uh, that is the entire opposite of what you believe, but it isn't about your beliefs. This is not opinion papers. These are not arguments. This is research. And so um, whatever your opinion is, you may be assigned to the opposite position. Okay, just again, a good opportunity to learn. I think you'll you'll find the projects pretty stimulating. Wow. Uh, I hope that wasn't too troubling. I, it's interesting. Um, I, that transition, I thought I had all of them out of there, but there it is again. And uh, uh, for those of you that have slow internet connections, I understand sometimes that particular kind of transition can be difficult, and uh, I apologize if that caused any problems for you. Um, okay, here again, I already told you after the group papers are completed what I'm going to do with it. I'll grade it and return it to you, and then post the ungraded paper in the discussion board forum for further discussions with classmates great opportunity for you to see what your classmates learn too by the way you learn a lot from reading each other's papers two tests during the semester one for 40 points about midway through I think it's week um, it will open on week seven and close at the end of week eight tests are open for about 11 days they are open book tests um, they will be in blackboard you don't have to go anywhere they're not uh, you know there's no monitors or proctoring or anything like that you can take it at home at any time during these 11 days and in fact um, you can take it twice so that if you're not happy with your first um, your first experience with the test uh, you can go back in and take it a second time and the higher of your two grades will be the one recorded so if you go back in to try to improve your grade and you do even worse you'll still get the first grade you only take it twice though um, you have they're timed I believe uh, and I 
the test will tell you, but I believe it's for an hour. I think the second test actually gives you 90 minutes because it's 60 questions. It gives you lots of time to dig through the textbooks if you want to to find the right answer. Um, the, the, the questions will primarily come from the uh, CECOM and the day text books. Uh, there might be a few questions from my lectures and things, but almost all of it's going to come right out of the book. So, so um, that's about those tests time tests they will close at the end of the time that it says so you know if you don't know anything you're not going to be able to not read the book and do well in the test because you're going to have to know where the answers are if you're going to use your books effectively which means you got to read and um, but uh, the, the time test open book uh, two offer two opportunities each time to um, take the test and you don't have to write me to ask for the the second opportunity blackboard will be set up so that it will allow you to take the test twice Oh, but let me say, they're only open for 11 days. They will open on Thursday. Uh, the first one opens, for instance, in week seven. It will open on Thursday of that week. So it gives you time to finish the readings for that week if you want. And it will stay open for about 11 days. It will close at midnight on uh, a week from the following Sunday. So that test one opens on October 10th, closes on October 20th at midnight. Once the test is closed, it isn't available to you any longer. So you want to make sure you get to the test during the periods that it's open. Just said that, didn't I? Bonus points. Remember additional discussion boards. And, and actually, I think you might find that there's more like, there might even be six. There's a couple other uh, points in the course where I think you can earn a few extra points too you know but uh, but basically it's structured to have 50 extra points in there so that uh, uh, God forbid you should miss a test or you know you miss a discussion board and you want to make up those points uh, something like that this will give you a chance to pick up those points I would advise you to always respond to both discussion boards if two are in there that week because you might not think you need the extra points but later on the semester you might want them it's a good idea to to respond to every discussion board When you open the course, you may have noticed this already, it opens to announcements in Blackboard. Um, please check to see if there are any new announcements. This is really the primary way I communicate with you during the semester. Um, when I put an announcement in Blackboard, I also will have it send you an email with that announcement in it. Um, and so that tells you two things. First, you need to check your university email frequently, constantly, regularly. This is your responsibility to do. If I post an announcement and you don't get that information, you don't see it, you don't read the email, I can't be responsible for that. Sometimes there are changes uh, that I post there. Sometimes there are things I'm pointing you to. Sometimes there are comments being made about do's and don'ts. Um, there are announcements about tests when the tests are posted. These are very important things, so please always check your university email frequently. Um, remember also that your fellow group members are going to be writing you, uh, trying to contact you through your university email as well. But for announcements, if you see announcements getting posted and you did not get a university an email about that, um, that tells you that there's a problem with your university email address perhaps and you need to uh, contact IT. Uh, every now and then I get bounce backs um, on when I send an email to a student and it says uh, it didn't get delivered and I keep getting that bounce back and um, the, I have a few occasions called IT and a lot of times it has to do with name changes if you've changed your name sometimes that'll happen um, so if you're not if you see announcements being posted that you're not getting emails about that there's a suggestion there that maybe maybe your university email address isn't working or isn't talking to Blackboard properly and remember this is how I contact you very very important that you stay on top of this Um, but I have to tell you the most important point in this course is that weekly course content button that is where you access your assignments and work every week and so when you open the course check your announcements go to weekly course content uh, click on weekly course content click on the week uh, that you're working in and then make sure you read all the slides in that week there are usually somewhere between eight nine ten slides each week that kind of walk you through the course every week um, 
don't skip slides please don't just like jump ahead to the discussion board uh, slide and answer the discussion board and close the case because or close the close the week out because you may get your discussion board points but you're not going to get your reading assignments you're going to miss the lectures you're going to miss my other comments that I have because I have opening and closing slides that kind of help you orient your thinking as you begin and end the material for the week um, there's the goals and objectives uh, links for your blog uh, there's other kinds of things in there so every week please go through each slide read them um, be sure you understand what's in each one let me know if there's any questions weekly course content the single most important link in the course menu If you've taken other online courses, you're familiar with the term netiquette. If you haven't, uh, this is net etiquette, I suppose, is the best way to explain this and probably speaks for itself. It really is. There's a set of rules for behaving properly online. And I would bet you that you could Google netiquette and find uh, many different lists of, you know, 30, 40 different things you do's and don'ts when you're, when, you, when you're in discussion boards and when you're posting online. Um, this particular section, uh, this segment, I believe, is the one, or maybe it's the start here section that has the, some netiquette rules there that I want you to look through. Uh, incidentally, if you haven't gone through the start here section, you need to do that. The start here section is is uh, gives you some um, some basic information about how to operate the course and everything. So please be sure you've gone through that start here button. Um, but the netiquette rules really, you know, kind of they, they recognize the fact, you know, when we talk with each other, we read uh, we hear tones of voice, we can see people's eyes, we can uh, see their body language, you know, we can see smiles or frowns or scowls or whatever. And, in, in, you know, as you know, in electronic communications, well, you got those little emoticons, but they don't really tell you much of anything, you know. It, it, um, what we write sometimes can be misinterpreted, you know. I mean, you know, how, how many people, you know, I mean, I have some people who, you know, they just don't type that well, and so everything they type is in caps, and of course, you know, the popular wisdom in, in e-communications is that, that, that when somebody is capitalizing things, they're yelling. Some people just do it for emphasis. You know, they don't really mean it that way. But in any event, um, you know, understand that what you type sometimes can be misread, misinterpreted uh, just by the way you have things worded. And so just be careful how you word things, that's all. And it doesn't mean, you know, well, it just means be sensitive to the fact that other people may not understand your mood or your, you know, sarcasm does not come through very well. Um, and, and um, you know, if you're, if you're kind of little puns and plays on words and things, sometimes they're not always understand, it's understood. So be sure you're careful about how you come across. Um, don't insult other people. Don't derogate others. Uh, don't put other people down or become, you know, offensive in your language. Please keep your language appropriate. Keep it academic. Don't. Um, a little bit of slang is okay, but I really, you know, it's not appropriate for you to be putting swear words and cuss words and things in your posts, even when you're kind of expressing your feelings. Maybe a little bit if you're talking with me privately in the blog or whatever, but but uh, please not in public posts and things because people are very offended by that. And frankly, you know, I, I mean, frankly, I don't really like a lot of foul language in, in posts either, you know, but but I mean, a little bit of that, it's okay. I can deal with it personally, but, but don't do that in public posts. Uh, remember that others read what you right and they have feelings and and um, we don't want to offend others we don't want to hurt other people but also want to forgive others when they do make mistakes so your first experience with the discussion board in this class will be to write a post of about 150 words or so uh, and more if you like that tells us something about who you are and here's some ideas of things that you might think about writing about but this is just just some ideas you can really write about anything but give us a little idea who this is behind this name um, I encourage people to post pictures um, some people are sensitive about that uh, and some people don't have the uh, the capacity to do that in their computer I guess but uh, um, uh, you know, photographs sometimes illustrate things. I don't mean just now in this post, but really throughout the semester. Feel free to post photos that might be appropriate to, to uh, the content or something like that. Um, because it just helps to illustrate things more. Um, and the, the photograph doesn't have to be of you. It could be of your family. It might be of your favorite vacation spot. It might be of something you're, uh, something you're 
thinking about maybe a dish you cooked even or something I don't know but but uh, photographs just feel free to post them as well they're, they're good to have in here but but your first discussion board really is your introduction the way you're um, you're going to introduce yourself to your classmates remember to go back in later read your classmates posts so the whole idea is we're reading each other's posts right and and give some responses that's how you get your 10 points your post plus at least two responses to classmates posts There is not going to be a blog, an e-scrapbook blog in, in week one's material because I want you kind of think you didn't know what your assignment was going to be, basically. And so I want you watching the news over the next week for current events related to social welfare or civil rights. And here's some, again, some examples of things. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, look for an article about that. And your first blog entry, you'll find it in week two weekly course content. You'll pick one of these. Um, again, um, just... Uh, title of the article and where you grew it from what where you got it from you know what what the date was that kind of thing a, a paragraph a brief paragraph summarizing what was in the article and then a reaction of at least 150 words to that article that's what gets posted in the blog Um, and it, as you're reading the day text in the next week, uh, and, and you really are reading the first three chapters, you, generally you won't have that much reading um, every week. As you can see this from the syllabus, but uh, I, I want to get through these early chapters so we can move on to other things. Chapters 1 and 2 in particular I think are, are more important uh, in, in uh, kind of laying a foundation for this course. And in chapter 1 in particular, she spells out nine American values that you, I want you to become very familiar with. These are things we're going to keep referring back to throughout the semester. It's a foundation concept that is really important to grasp and, and to, you know, to keep in mind. So be sure you read them and understand them, but also chapter two as well. Now my lectures in the next week, I will have a lecture from each chapter, um, but the lecture is not sufficient to really to cover the material in the chapter so don't get the notion that you know you don't have to read the book you can just listen to my lectures because my lectures aren't that good and uh, uh, also uh, I'm also going to post slides from those lectures without sound so that you can print them out if you want to have them for reference as well uh, there'll be you know the lecture is going to be in Blackboard anyway but these are basically YouTube videos that I'm putting together they're PowerPoint lectures like this and so um, that's that's what you have to look forward to and I will try to keep them shorter I will try to keep them interesting some weeks I'll do a better job of that than others and just know that I, I want to keep your interests and hope that you'll find the material something worthwhile for you as the semester goes on so oh uh, let me just tell you before we quit I, I, I usually do this in the first slide and I didn't do this but my own experience uh, I have a master's degree in social work I have been practicing in the social work field for about 40 years um, presently, I am um, the supervisor of the Child Protection Investigations Unit in Kenai, as well as teaching here, of course, uh, you know, um, um, part-time as well. I have a couple, actually this semester, three, sometimes two, sem two classes a semester, uh, sociology, human services, social work courses. I've been teaching for most of the last 20 years at um, this part-time gig with Kenai Peninsula College and, and more recently also with the University of Alaska Anchorage in the School of Social Work. Um, and in the last five years, uh, more and more of my courses are going on the web, and um, I'm spending less and less time in the classroom. Um, and I have mixed feelings about that, but I'm finding that this is a great medium to, to do an education, and then you can still get a very good education. Um, you can get a very good education through this e-learning environment. I feel strongly about that, or I wouldn't be doing it. But back a little bit to myself. In the 40 years that I've been, I've been in the social work field, I got my bachelor's from Michigan State, my master's from Florida State. Um, I have worked a couple of years in Florida in uh, food stamp certification and also in public assistance certification. I was a welfare worker essentially for a couple of years in Florida. Worked in child protection in Central Florida for about four years or so, carrying a caseload of kids that were abused and neglected. Uh, moved over then to work in a children's shelter. Uh, this is basically where, where the uh, Child Protection Agency placed kids when they had to be removed from their families and they didn't have foster homes for the kids. We had a 128 bed facility there and uh, for part of the time I worked in a program for uh, behaviorally disordered adolescents as a caseworker. Um, I went back to school and got my master's degree at that point and when I came back I was managing the social work and counseling services around that campus. Again in that uh, we had uh, I think 
uh, four, five, six, seven, eight or nine cottages of boys and girls between the ages of six and 18. And so uh, in 1987 is when I moved to Alaska. I spent eight years working as an outpatient mental health therapist, um, mostly working with children and families uh, during that time, but also a lot of other things as well. And that led me up to 1995, being hired by the state to, to manage the, the Kenai Child Protection Office. Now, over the years, as we've added staff in that office, uh, my focus has become increasingly, um, you know, well, my, my job, I guess, has become increasingly focused and narrow and uh, mostly on uh, uh, child protection investigations now in Kenai, although I, I, I also do manage the Seward office and have not only investigations down there, but also um, we uh, manage uh, children that are in foster homes and, you know, either going back with their parents or in a, in uh, going into an adoptive situation also volunteered as a big brother and uh, in, in um, Florida and Michigan both and and also um, was a host parent for foreign exchange students for nine years nine different kids and have adopted um, th three boys over the years as a single dad and so all that's to say is is that I think this kind of you know puts me in a position where I can talk about these things and and share some experiences with you uh, as you work through this material so I hope I hope you find the the, uh, uh, the material worth your time and, and uh, look forward to working with you. So please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to contact me. Again, email is probably the best way. And otherwise, uh, check in next Sunday morning uh, and uh, your next week's material will be available to you then. Take care.